Well, oh yeah, questions. I have my, these questions. Hold on, hold on. I gotta get the questions out. We had a couple of them. I did check the basket. Oh, there's no other ones over there. Um, this one is, can you do a comparison in being newly married as 20-somethings versus being newly married in your 60s, I'll add, somethings? What, what may have been a challenge in your 20s, such as in-laws having children, trying to advance in a career, etc. Uh, it says also, uh, how would you apply this in your 60s? And yet, there are still challenges. Might not apply in your 60s, but there's still challenges. Um, you know, we're going to be covering some of that mm -hmm, tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like, uh, it'll, I don't want to be Pete and repeat. No, we'll, we'll, but, we'll uh, actually address all that. Yeah, so... We'll address this during the study. There we go. How's that? Okay. Can I thank have you. that so I'll remind you? Can have you. It. Yes. Thank you, dear. Quite so. Also, this one is, uh, I'm going to, it's a long one, but I'm going to get to the heart of it. It's just the question. Yeah. It says, uh, okay, I'm a guy with a huge nothing box. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how we discover that with Gunger, right? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, but I still have feelings. Isn't it okay for me to want my wife to initiate lovemaking from time to time? Uh, how will I really know that she wants to make love if I'm the one always initiating? A man wants to be wanted and desired too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And we'll be talking about that tonight also. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's important to realize it is a two-way street and wives and husbands, husbands and wives, whatever order you prefer, they need to be initiating equally and uh, substantially in the marriage relationship. And um, also there's a little statement here about uh, you get to or you got to and being a servant. I think, I think what's important is we're called to serve each other and one of the things was in the Gunger videos, they watched uh, several of these Gunger videos, and it was about negotiating with one another. Well, I think negotiating is, how, how are things going today? Can we get together intimately and so forth? Uh, is talking about it. And the other thing is, is to motivate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes an individual needs motivation. So you have to uh, talk to them and speak about your interest and then also be one that is uh, being kind and good and exciting and fun so that the other one desires to uh, partake thereof. Amen. And that would be an important aspect of it. But just to have this expect on demand attitude is going to be kind of a difficult situation. As much as you may negotiate, you may not be a good negotiator. And one of you Whichever's the better negotiator may always win, and it might, might not be your desire. So it's, it's a package deal, if you know what I mean. You just can't expect without preparing for the expectation. Would you like to add to that, my dear? No, I'm good. I think that's good because I want to wait for what we're doing. Because it's kind of like yeah, all flowing into this, right? Mm -hmm. So let's pray. <laughs> Father, we ask for your blessing upon uh, our teaching tonight, Lord, and, and understanding of how you've designed us as men and women and how we're to be uh, connected in that one flesh that you so desire and to be fruitful and multiplying mm -hmm. in our relationship and in life. So, Lord God, may you speak to us. May you guide us together as one. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Are you ready? Okay. Start so, your engines. You want me to do this part first? Yes, my wife is first with a... Funny. Go ahead, dear. I thought we should start with this. This is pretty hilarious. Girls, you will, you will, you will relate to this. Um, maybe some of you have heard of this before. I don't know. I'm going to make it big so it'll be easy for me to read. Okay. It's called The Husband's Store. Have you heard of that? Husband's it's. Mm -hmm. Is there really a husband's store? Is it like... Macy's in New York or what? Okay, Daryl, don't make it so much okay, difficult. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's just, it's just Here, a, here's the a, husband's it's store. It's a segue in icebreaker. The husband's store. A brand new store has just opened in New York City that sells husbands. 
When women go to choose a husband, they have to follow the instruction at the entrance. You may visit this store only once. There are six floors, and the value of the products increase as you ascend to the, the, to the flights. You may choose any item from a particular floor, or you may choose to go up to the next floor, but you cannot go back down except to exit the building. So a woman goes to the husband's door to find a husband. The first floor sign on the door reads, Floor 1. These men have jobs. The second floor sign reads, Floor 2. These men have jobs and love kids. The third floor sign reads, Floor 3. These men have jobs, love kids, and are extremely good looking. Wow, she thinks but feels compelled to keep going. She goes to the fourth floor and the sign reads floor, floor four. This, these men have jobs, love kids, are drop dead good looking and help with the housework. Oh, mercy me, she exclaims. I can hardly stand it. Still, she goes to the fifth floor and the sign reads floor five. These men have jobs. Um, I lost my, oh, these men have jobs, love kids, are drop dead gorgeous, help with housework, and have a strong romantic streak. She's so tempted to stay, but she goes to the sixth floor, and the sign reads, floor six, you are a visitor. You are 31,456 and 12 to this floor. There are no men on this floor. This floor exists solely as proof that women are impossible to please. <laughs> Thank you for shopping at the husband's store. Isn't that hilarious? But to, vo to avoid gender bias charges, the store owner opens a new wives store just across the street. The, the first floor has wives that love sex. The second floor has wives that love sex and have money. The third and fourth and fifth and sixth floors have never been visited. <laughs> I thought this is a great icebreaker in what we're going to be sharing tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. It was oh, in yes. one of my files. I said, Daryl, can I, can I read this tonight? If we just find the perfect person, right, to marry. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, they There's don't only exist. one perfect person, and that is There's, Jesus. Amen. We amen. are married to sinners who are being conformed into the image of Christ. So we have to keep that grace and mercy always in the forefront with our spouses in view. Now, in going to the very beginning in the book of Genesis, God says, let us make man in our image, right? Then he goes forth and he makes uh, the woman. And he says, what, what God has brought together, let no man separate, right? Leave your father and mother and be joined together as one flesh. And that oneness of flesh is to be one in the spirit as well as one in the flesh. So it's important for us to realize this is God's design of this unity of love. Love for God, love for one another, a love that's not a selfish love, a love that's not a manipulative love, a love that is a pure love, a love that is an honest love, a love that is also a romantic love. And so he says, be one flesh. And then he also gives the command to go be, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, well, to be fruitful is not to go out and pick apples and oranges and peaches and, you know, bananas. But rather to be fruitful in that love relationship that you're to have with one another and to multiply, enjoy it, okay? It's not just a one-time deal. Till you get a couple of kids, now you're done, all right? But it's to be something that is enjoyed between the husband and the wife, the man and the woman there, and they enjoy each other. They enjoy each other's bodies. They enjoy each other's love. They enjoy each other's love making. They see it as a part of their marriage relationship that is fulfilling to both of them. Mm -hmm. And this is vitally important. And so we also find in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, Paul says that uh, let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Uh, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does, and likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. And then he says, do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may 
give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Jesus also talks about this oneness in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19. He says, God made them male and female, brought them together to be one flesh. So it's a very important aspect of God's design for the marriage relationship as well as for the lovemaking part of the relationship. And as, you know, Sue and I were talking about this topic, <clears throat> we've discovered there's been times where we've been in counseling with couples and they haven't been intimate with each other for months, for years, uh, and years, and years, and years. And it's like, how can you develop a great relationship? No wonder you're in here for counseling. You're, you're not even fulfilling the very basic uh, desires that a husband and wife are to have for each other in the marriage relationship. It, it's, if, if you need a friend, just hang out with friends, okay? But if you want to get married, your body no longer belongs to you. Your body is to be given over to the other individual. And that's part of the whole love that God has created to be fruitful and multiplying. Uh, and so when you do get married, don't be a, a surprised person that says, no sex for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't work that way. I've counseled that actually, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately several times where the, the guy or the girl for that matter thinks they're getting married, they're going to be having an intimate relationship, but the one says, no, I don't want that. Well, you should have told them in the very beginning before you even got involved in the relationship, got involved in the engagement, and then you deceive them all the way to the point of marriage, and now you're married and you don't want an intimate relationship? That's deception. Mm -hmm. And that's sin. And now that can it be rectified? Yes, because now you have to be obedient to God. God says you're to be one flesh. God says you're to serve one another. You're to bless each other. And this is so vitally important because uh, uh, everybody is getting married for what? Because you love each other and you want to make love to each other. Amen? And you want to be fruitful and multiplying. It doesn't mean you have to have kids right away, but it may happen, Okay. Uh, we weren't planning on having our children, uh, well, a child right away, but it happened in the first year of our marriage, and um, it is what it is, mm -hmm. and you love your kids, right? It just, our plans are not always God's plans, mm -hmm. and so you make the adjustments. But it's vitally important that when God says this in his word, the law of first mention about the marriage relationship, he says it is to be fruitful, and it is to multiply. So it's not a one and done, mm -hmm. Right? It's part of your life. It's part of what you do with each other. And when it comes to that intimate relationship of the marriage, it brings you even closer together, mm -hmm. okay? And it's, it's important to realize this. Uh, whereas sometimes there might be some issues that have happened in your past that you're going to have to overcome in the Lord. Could be child molestation. That, that creates a, a problem. But that all needs to be talked about before you get married. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be like, that's the past. That's not who I'm married to. I'm married to someone who loves me, who's going to take care of me, who cherishes me. And we need to come together in that love. And I can't take that past experience and plop it into the marriage relationship. The Bible says you've got to move on. You've got to carry on with your life. And that's vitally important. So we find that there's no excuse in the marriage relationship. Well, I don't like the way I look. Well, it doesn't really matter. They married you for the way you look. And so you come together. If you want the lights out, that's up to you. But anyway, I'm just saying is what, we, what we're doing is we're denying something that God has created mm -hmm. between a man and a woman. And you can't do that. You can't do that. And it's so vitally important that you, we come together in the aspect of the marriage relationship. Now, Honey, do you want to add to this? I do. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> I, I, I love this feeling. subject. Um, he's talking about fruitful and multiply, but also God has created um, sexual intimacy for pleasure. You know, so it's not just for pre, uh, uh, multiplying, but it's, it is that bonding. It is a pleasure. It is exploring. It is discovering. And it's making ourselves vulnerable and growing in that aspect 
of the most intimate act that you can possibly enjoy as a couple that God has ordained. And I think a beautiful, like my, your homework for tonight is to go home and read together or read by yourself, maybe by yourself first, and pray and ask God to illumin, illuminate Song of Solomon. It is a beautiful love story of intimacy. And it's not perfect. They do have some ups and downs in, in those eight chapters. But it's such, a, it's such a beautiful story of two people who um, start their um, relationship with exhilaration and, ex and compliments in second chapter and on goes their marriage and whatnot. And just read it first because we'll talk more about it probably next week. But when he's talking about the bonding, which is so neat with God, um, the sexual intimacy that is released in your chemicals. We are made in God's physical um, being. And so we have this physical chemical release that I share in my classes that is called oxytocin for the women that is released when we have that sexual intimacy. That oxytocin is released from your pituitary gland and is bonding you to that person. And which is so cool because that bonding is necessary because at that time in lovemaking, you're getting close together. It might not feel like you're getting close, but you're being more vulnerable. But what happens too is that bonding helps you when he doesn't look as appealing to you or she, or she's irritating you. It keeps that bonding going. That oxytocin keeps you bonded for life circumstances. So that intimacy level together is a blessing for at the moment and for longevity also. And so the men, um, I just want to give you a couple little things real quick. Um, dopamine gets a lot of um, uh, advertisement. You know, it's the, the feel-good release that we have when we have someone like us on Facebook or Instagram or, or whatnot. You have that release. And I just want to say what it, what it is. Um, it's a brain chemical that also becomes like a sex organ too. So you need to realize your brain is part of your sex intimacy organs. And so dopamine is a neutral transmitter that is responsible for that intensely good feeling that we experience when we do something exhilarating. It gives us that desire or the need to repeat that behavior that causes us such a good sensation. But it also can be behaviors that can be dangerous for us, so we need to take caution. Dopamine is a chemical, chemical highly associated with addictions of all kinds, including sexual addictions and pornography use. So we have to be careful what we are putting in front of us. But oxytocin, oxytocin is released in a woman when she's giving birth. Um, at that time of, of, of labor and birth, she's releasing oxytocin to bond with her child. When she's nursing, she's releasing oxytocin also, and, and she is bonded to that child, even though she's exhausted in the night for the fifth feeding, um, but that oxytocin keeps her bonded to that infant. Sorry. Okay, can you hear me? Sorry. No. Good? Okay. So the oxytocin is is released also um uh what would I say that, that and, and during the um, the love making and vasopressin is the the hormone that is released for the man. Okay, so these chemicals are associated with bonding that God is talking about. So God created this chemical bonding in our bodies. So you can also see, once again, the majesty of who God is and what he has done with us. There's that evidence of a God creator and... Um, and that's why sometimes when you wonder, like, when women stay with abusive spouses or boyfriends, when they've had that sexual intimacy, that bonding, it's hard for them to let go because their body tells them chemically to stay together. So you can retrain your brain. And, um, and so this is why it's so important that we don't have 
multiple partners because in our brain, we start having pathways that are being formed for each one and the commitment level gets less and less. But if you're staying with the same partner, it's an amazing thing because in your brain, it keeps growing and you get stronger and stronger with your spouse, how God has created it. So when we go through those life's ups and downs in our marriages where we kind of don't like each other sometimes or we don't like ourselves and we're going through stressor points, that bonding that God has literally placed in the marriage, love making intimacy, is something that we can hold on to that he uses to bond. And I think it's beautiful. And so... Um, I just wanted to share that with you because I share this with my 7th and 8th graders so they understand the importance to save themselves, that you do not want to mess with other false intimacy levels. Um, watch what your eyes are seeing on the internet because you don't want the dopamine release, you don't want the releases of the chemicals to bond with something other than your future spouse. You want to hold on to that. And, um, and, and the other thing is, is because your visual is so important and with men and women, we're we're visual, we're visual, it's so important that you look at each other when you are experiencing intimacy, that you're bonding together. And as Song of Solomon said, that, she, that he said, she said that you have dove eyes, which means committed eyes, that he's only looking at me. He's only committed to me. There is no one else in where um, it speaks of, because doves have only one mate for a lifetime. And that is the biblical perspective, once again, beautifully displayed in God's glorious creation. So we want to make sure that we watch what our brains are um, watching and what we are bonding to. And the intimacy level of the sexual act is definitely part of the brain structure to it. So it's full body and it's spiritually um, um, biblical according to God's word when he says one. So I, I would encourage that. Like it's super, super important. Um, and I just wanted to share that because it's, it's, it's another thing is, is, let me share this too. Women, when you are ovulating, you have these pheromones that are being released through your body. And your husband supernaturally is attracted to you. That's why we get pregnant. Is because all of a sudden we're a little bit more amorous. You're a little bit more looking at him going, you know, he's looking really cute to me today. And it's be and you're hungrier. Um, you're a little bit more ready to, to receive and spend some time with him. And that is how God has made us. And, and they are going to have these trans, they're going to have these pheromones that they're all of a sudden feeling triggered by you. And so this is like, you know, once a month that within a 20, a 12 to 24 hour window, we are all walking miracles because our parents and ourselves can only conceive within a 12 to 24 hour period every month. So you can actually figure out your cycle when you want to have children and keep your, your body healthy. And by um, just um, listening to your body and watching your temperature, um, and you, you can, if you not wanting children during that time, then you can restrain for a couple of days and then wait until you're ready to have the next one, unless the Lord opens your womb anyway, so it doesn't matter, but you can do all you possibly can. He's still gonna do that. Now, let me caution you on something. Um, all the research I've read, and it's documented, that any type of birth control that you are taking decreases your sex drive, okay? So it's not normal for you to have those chemicals or those things in your body. If you're lacking luster in your lovemaking, that's probably one of the, um, the inhibiting factors right there. And so I wanna let you know that. And those of you who take birth control, I'm gonna tell you this too, because I really care about it, because our doctors are not telling us this. When you start taking birth control, you, you age your cervix two years for every year that you take it. So your fertility window starts from your day of menstruation up to possibly 40 if you're lucky. But after 35, it's pretty late in the game. And your eggs are dying from, 20, from the age of 27 on. So the easiest, the hardest way to get pregnant is when you delay um, having children later in life. As you notice that you see a lot of people having a problem with that. 
but God has geared us to to really have children in younger years. And so I just want to encourage you to really watch what you're putting in your body because God has um, allowed you to have the gift of fertility every month. And those of you who have daughters, like you need to explain this kind of stuff to them. I've realized that moms are not spending time explaining fertility and the health of that um, with their children. And so I have the privilege to do that here for our school. So I want to share that with you. And maybe I'll have a mother's um, teaching on all of this and show you what we do at the school because the kids learn a lot about that. But um, you want to protect your fertility because God has blessed you with that. And um, so be careful with that, all of you who are still young, um, and, um, and just really understand that there is a body function going on, and sometimes um, you need to understand that's our God-given um, signal from the Lord that he's created us with in the marriage, in the context of marriage. Do you want to say anything at that point? I would, I would say that as we look to the coming together to be one, you know, mar uh, the intimate aspect of the marriage relationship is to be, of course, only after marriage. Mm -hmm. And then comes the challenges, right? Yes. A young married couple, and many times uh, they have different perspectives of that sexual in intimacy. And it's important that you start talking about and communicating in regards to it so that you're understanding her needs and you're understanding his needs. Uh, instead of just playing the guessing game. Mm -hmm. And generally... When you're first starting out in your 20s... In your 20s... Uh, you're still learning about the, that. The young man is very amorous, mm -hmm. and so can the young lady be, but yes. many times there's other things that can stop the amorous for the young man because... She may be afraid of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, it could be other factors. And those things need to be talked about and not to be afraid of those issues as you explain to each other. The other thing is, what do you enjoy? What do you not enjoy? Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, a lot of people like to do a lot of things. Uh, you need to know that this is, this is great. <laughs> This is not great, okay? And then you respect each other, and that's important uh, when it comes to uh, the lovemaking aspect of the relationship. But the also, one of the most important things in regards to this is the, the prepping, if you will, mm -hmm. for that aspect of the relationship. And that means by being, as you saw with Gunger a few weeks ago, being nice, being kind, being... Uh, uh, generous by being uh, uh, complimentary, being encouraging. If you're going to act like a stinker, well, probably your love life is going to stink too. Okay? Simple as that. Because who wants to be with someone who's treating them horribly? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. So this is an important factor in regards to the whole aspect of love and romance and, you know, if you want to call it the, the dessert in the relationship. Uh, the meat and potatoes is the communication and loving each other, doing special things for one another. Uh, it's so vitally important. Uh, it, it, just, it just isn't the old expression of wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Well, pretty soon the ma'am is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't work that way. So it needs to be a time of preparation and understanding. For some people, they're into spontaneity. That's fine. For other people, they're schedulers. <laughs> Okay, and it's like, okay, we're, this is the best time, the best night. When you start having kids, life changes a lot. You got a little one sleeping in bed with you, right? Uh, many times, and it's like you're trying to get through that one. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh boy, this is really changing our life. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know. You're... So enjoy the honeymoon stage. <laughs> because when you that's when it's, when it's safe. There's no one around, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff. And I would encourage all kinds of fun stuff. You know, you, you fun date, you, you do, I know, here you're all smiling already. I, you know, we, okay. Could you define fun? Yes, let's, let's <laughs> define. You know, 
Okay, when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you feel so different about yourself each 10 years. There's something about it. I wish I could talk to my younger self in 20s and say, hey, you got it going on right now. What's your problem? Because now where I'm at, it's like, okay, why didn't I know this stuff now? What I should have known then, we probably would have had a, f a football team by this time. But let me explain a few things. Because we're still exploring when you're young. You're, you know, when you're young, you get misinformation. People, your friends are telling you things. You know, your teachers are telling you things. The, the culture is the telling, culture's you, telling you stuff. Yeah. And you really don't know anything. And then if you're like me, your mom doesn't tell you anything. You know? And so you have to learn and discover. And you have to... It's just you and your spouse, though. There isn't any outside sources. You know, it's, it's, it's your lovemaking. It's your intimacy level that's only reserved for you too. So don't bring in past things. I always tell the girls, the past we cannot alter, but bring the past to the altar of Christ. And he will heal, renew, redeem, and resurrect and make new. And he does that. That's the God that we serve, mm -hmm. you know? So I want to encourage you that when you're young, not to have preconceived ideas, discover with your spouse. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you discover intimacy, just it's your unique God-given blessing. No one else gets to share it. You know, um, for us, we were young and silly and um, naive at the beginning, you know, and Daryl was probably more fulfilled sexually in those early years because he was much more advanced than I was and I wasn't as confident. And as I grew in reading Christian books and authors in regards to a woman's body, a man's needs, a woman's needs, a man's body, I started learning a little bit. But during that time, I was raising kids Ministry was crazy. I was working. So yeah, you, you're, you have energy, but then your energy spent. And so you do need to work on that, that time when you're younger. Like we had to go on dates. We had to go away for a night at times um, on our little schedule, measly. Also, you have to schedule when you have kids, you have to schedule that they go to bed at a proper yes. time. I so they can be together with 7:30. each other. 7.30. Our kids, 7.30, 8 o'clock. They were they, asleep by 8 o'clock. They're staying up to 11, 12 o'clock mm -hmm. at night with you. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't, it's not going to develop your relationship. And besides that, they need their sleep. And you need to have time alone with each other yes. to develop And that's that an inhibitor for women because <clears throat> men, I, I don't know how you feel. You're, you're going to have to talk about that. Oh but goodness. when we have small children in the house or we have guests in the house, that's just not going to happen because now I'm feeling self-conscious. And that's just a woman's thing that we deal, deal with. But you can get creative, you know, if you, you know, if people are there too long and your kids are, you know, living with you for 18 years. So you have to figure out going away or uh, coming up with creative ideas. And that's between you and your husband. And we have come up with creative ideas over the long time. I mean, over the 42 years we've been married. But I, I do want to say you have to, you have to work at it. You can't just quit and say, we're raising kids, I'm too tired, I got two jobs. No, your number one priority besides Jesus Christ is your spouse. Your kids are not your number one priority. I had to learn that really quick. God gave me my husband as my gift first, and everything else comes from that. But I had to show my children that my husband was number one besides Jesus. And so that they understood, no, you're going to bed now because uh, dad and I are going to have a time by ourselves, and you're all going to go to sleep and we're going to be in the kit. We're going to be in the living room or in the kitchen and we're going to be, and you don't get to come down the stairs because this is our time to have time alone to talk and be a couple. And our kids had to learn that, you know, and, and we had to make that happen. And we also had to fight for that. And I know a lot of you have more kids than we do. And so you have a bigger um, scale to work with and, um, and only God by his grace can give you all the creativity that y'all need to do for, um, with your more than two kids than we had. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was harder at the beginning for us. Um, but I will say like, um, well, you tell me. No, you say what? Where, well, are, you, where are you going? Let's just go through like small kids. You got to make time and women, your husbands at these young ages from 20 to 40, they need you. You're the only one who can meet that need. 
You're the only one that God has given you that God-given assignment to meet that, the physical needs of your husband. You're the only one. And if you're not giving that to him, that's cruel. I had a young lady, I've had a few young ladies over the years, which shocked me um, that they, like Daryl was saying, that they were, they married their husbands, but they decided after they had kids, they didn't want to have any more intimacy whatsoever. Well, that husband divorced her. They were too young. Like, how could you ask a young man not to have a lover in his life? That's what he's created to have a companion to, to meet that physical, emotional, relational need that only comes with the, the beautiful setting of just oneness of just two people all alone in the world that God has blessed. And where you can create this beautiful um, setting just for you two to enjoy and to keep growing in for the rest of your life. And it was sad that they ended up getting divorced. And I, I just feel bad for the, the children because they're, you know, they don't have their parents with them anymore. But it's cruel. It's absolutely cruel for us to be like that with our husbands. And I just want to encourage you. I know it's not always great. I know it's not, it's not going to be perfect every time. And you got to get that out of your head. Sometimes it's just going to be to meet your husband's need. And it won't meet your need that night. And it's okay. Because you're still bonding. It's still going to be you. But then you can work on a, a time where it's going to be, you're going to be fulfilled and pleasured also. And you're going to have that conversation with your husband and say, you know what, let's really work on this tonight. And we're the initiators. We have the rose petals, uh, rose petals going up the stairs and giving him the signal when he comes home and the soft music and the candles burning. I love to surprise him, you know, and I can do way better than Hollywood. Let me tell you, because I'm the real deal. You know, and so I'm telling you ladies, romance your husbands. You will get more out of it than you realize. It's so much fun. Okay, now let me say this. Those of you who have small <laughs> children and have many children, I know that that's hard to do when they're all home. So you have to come up with some other ideas for yourself. Okay, but when my kids were on a retreat for the weekend, I was also on a retreat for the weekend with my husband. And I would plan, okay, we're, we have two nights. The, no kids are in the house. No guests are at our house. I am going to figure this out. Because I don't always put the responsibility on him to be the romantic. I had to teach him how to be romantic. Okay? And, so, and then we're trying to be out romantic to each other at this point in many aspects. I'm still winning, but he's coming up. He's doing pretty doggone good. Okay. I don't want to win. No, I do want to win. <laughs> but you have to make that time to date, to hold hands, to do those special daily things for each other where you look at his eyes or she looks at your eyes. And you just know, like, tonight's going to be the night. And I'm going to do everything possible to make it happen. And, you know, and I just, and it's not always about the intimacy. It is about the thinking of one another. It's about considering. It's about going, you know, I'm going to love him tonight because I love him. You know, and it's, it's a beautiful crossover. And so I, it's, it's taken us years to get to a place where we're at, where I can actually tell people about it now, you know, um, And so sometimes, you know, I've heard it said, I don't know who said it, sometimes your love making's a crock pot, it simmers, and it can be a long duration of a beautiful event, or it can be a microwave. You know, sometimes it's not going to be the same all the time, and I would encourage you to be spontaneous, to be creative, both, party, both parties, husbands and wives. Um, don't do the normal things, just, okay, The normal things, like most men, like I know you're going to cringe when I say this. Flowers are great, but it's normal. Chocolate is great, but it's normal. Think of something outside of the box. Do something extraordinary. Add the chocolate and the flowers and the candles and the soft music. But always have that little touch. You come down in a cute little... Girls come out down in their cute little lingeries that they like, and they got them for every type, let me tell you. I've been I in all those stores. I don't come down in lingerie, I promise. No. <laughs> But he will look cute for me. He, he knows what I like, 
and he will get the fire table going with the soft bubble music going with the little cheese and crackers and stuff. And he, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great night because he's going to talk to me and we're going to have fun, you know, and we're going to have dinner outside together. And he dances with me in the moonlight by my pool and he does little things like that that cost no money, but it's just he initiates it, and then I'll say to him, will you just dance with me this one song? And what is our song? And everyone should have a, a song. You need to have a song, couples. You need to have a song. Ours is... Still the one you're talking about? Was oh. that the one you're talking about? Still the one? Hey, you need to say it with boldness. That you, okay, no, he's a lot more romantic than you well, realize. He's just being songs, like... You know, I don't know what kind of mood she's in, right? Oh, no, no. But the main song that we have is it's called You're Still the One. Uh, was it Billy Ocean, I think it is? No, no, no. It's New Orleans. Oh, Orleans. Orleans. Thank Orleans. You. Thank you. Orleans. Orleans. That's Orleans. our song. And so once in a while, I'll come home from a, a day at work. He's cooking dinner or, or he got Costco shrimp or something and he has it all out. He's got candles. And guess what song he has on? You're Still the One. I'm like, oh, my God. He's so cute. And just little things like that he does all the time where it makes me feel loved. It's our thing. It's no one else's. We've created it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You serve a creative God and you can be creative. And your creativeness never has to stop because God is unlimited. He will continually show you how to be created to love your spouse. And if you have Alexa, you can just boss her around. You feel really good about it. <laughs> Tell her to play the song and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I think also for, uh, from the guy's side to his blushing bride, huh? and uh, is that, you know, you need to find out it, it, it can't be the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, every mm -hmm. time, okay? And so you need to find out what does she really enjoy? What, what is a romantic evening to her? Because mm -hmm. everybody has their own definitions and their own ideas about it. And I want to be connected with what she thoroughly enjoys in a romantic evening. Not just what I think. Um, I think because you've done so well, Oh my. That it actually has boosted your ego in this, oh, quite so. this particular <sighs> compartment. And yeah. that's why I would tell you, ladies, <laughs> help your husband. Ego, but because you didn't feel confident in it, and now you do. Well, yeah, because it's, it's a process. It's a process of discovery of uh, it's what, sometimes what I think is going to be a really good thing. She's going to like, yeah, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I yeah, communicate, talk to each other, find out. That's not only in the romancing, romancing of, the, uh, of your evening or day or whatever it might be, weekend. And uh, don't be defensive, too. Like yeah, when yeah. he's telling you, like, I really don't like if you do this or, or vice versa. No, that's the process of discovery, you know, is, is learning like, okay, how, how would you, what would please you? How would you want me to touch you? Oh, I don't really like it when you touch me this way. But watch the way you're saying that, but learn like, okay, she doesn't like this or he doesn't like that. And learn what you do like, right? I mean, and that's what we've had to learn, which has been so fun to, to know that I can discover new aspects or he'll, he'll say something like, hey, I really, have really, I really enjoyed the other night. And I go, really? So what did you enjoy? But, and he would tell, and I'm thinking, I know exactly what I'm thinking. He's going to say that he enjoyed, and it's not even that. And so he exposes his heart, and like, oh, wow, take a note of that, you know, for the next time or for down the future. And so I think it's, it's really important that we're not defensive. He said, oh, you know what, we need to work on this. Okay, don't be defensive about it. Just work on it because you love him or you love her. And just know that we're not going to be like each other. We just have to, um, as the Bible says, to learn with understanding, right? And so I think for us, I think that was a big deal. Can I say something too? Yeah, of course. Okay, let's talk a little bit real quick too on hormones. Okay, girls. Now you're getting older. No, nope. this okay. is not, it's not always because of That's the older. True. That's okay. not Go true. Ahead. You're right. When you get married and you don't feel like you have any sexual drive, I want to strongly encourage you to go to a doctor who understands women's bodies 
your thyroid, your hormones. There's root factors of why sometimes we are lacking luster in our romance department. And part of it is because we might be low on progesterone. Women need three types of hormones, progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen. And there's safe levels of that. And some women have way more testosterone than others. Some have low progesterone, which causes depression and um, lethargy and migraines and all kinds of stuff. I've learned all this. Let me tell you, because I've had to go through this. Um, estrogen also. So, so depending on what you are experiencing in your intimacy, you need to share these things with your doctor. And in my case, I had, in, when I turned in my 40s and 50s, I was low on all three of my hormones. So I started spiraling down loss of intimacy level, loss of drive for life, for everything. I was feeling very depressed. And I thought something was wrong with me. And I thought it was a spiritual thing. So I thought I needed to learn the fruit of the spirit and and let that show more in my life because I knew I had the, the fruit of the Spirit, but that wasn't it. It was, it was chemical. It was definitely something in my body that needed to be addressed. And so I would encourage you, and men, they get low on testosterone even in early years, not just in the later years. So if your sexual drive is, is which is normal for it to decline, you might want to check out different ways to work that through. Or you, you guys work that out as a couple. But I'm just saying for the women, um, it really helped me because there was a point in time I had no desire. I loved Daryl, but I was not ever in the mood, and that's just not normal. And until I had my hormones checked and was um, under a doctor's care, it took about eight months for me to heal and heal my body for me to be back to that person that I needed to be in that intimate, intimate level. So I wanna explain that to you, that that is real. And we struggled with that as a, as a couple. And think, he thought I didn't love him anymore, that I wasn't attracted to him anymore. But it wasn't that, it was my body was not functioning properly. And so I wanna encourage you on that. And, um, and, and, and you say, also felt a sense of like inside uh, intensity. Oh, I was a demon inside. And, uh, yeah, it was not and, a good time. And not happy and trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And of course, it would blurt out at times. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? You know? And it's like, uh, what do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything. Uh, because yes. with these decaying bodies of ours and our poor food chain that we have, uh, things just happen. Now, we're, we've reached a point where we can supplement mm -hmm. uh, the body and help it to be in better health, uh, which affects you physically or affects you emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, mentally. And so sometimes we have to, we, we recommend these things for individuals, whether it be a woman or be a man, whatever the case they're going through. So that now we're not talking about taking drugs, testosterone no. to be, you know, you know, Mr. Atlas or something like that, right? Uh, but if, it's, if things have reduced themselves to such a degree, you might consider it to see a doctor and see what that's all about. Mm -hmm. There's other, there's foods that you can eat that can naturally produce it, and that's what you can look into too. Mm -hmm. And there's other avenues. But it's important that we realize we try to keep our bodies in balance in every form and fashion, uh, whether it be physical, emotional, or of course, spiritual, right? And uh, it's important that we keep the spiritual life number one, we keep the soulish life number two, which is the emotional, and then the physical number three. And as you get older, uh, things begin to change, things begin to fall apart. You could go through menopause at a young age, mm -hmm. which she was going through, mm -hmm. um, and we weren't sure what was going on. Also, women with their, uh, their time of the month, you know, there's certain uh, vitamins, minerals, and, and so forth that are depleted out of the body. And thus, there's this real drop in their uh, uh, energy levels and so forth. Uh, many women lose a lot of iron during that time and other, other vitamins. And so we have the ability now to understand our bodies more than ever mm -hmm. uh, with the science that we have. And it's beneficial. Now, anything taken to any extreme is not good, right? 
So we have to be careful that we maintain it within the balance mm -hmm. of what's proper. And to be under a doctor's yeah. care too. Like I'm under a doctor's care. All my hormones that I take are all very natural and they're made just only for me. It wouldn't help anybody else's body. So it's, I'm, I'm tested every three months. So I make sure all my ranges are right. And so anything that we put, I'm a firm believer, the less you put in your body, the better because we're made of the earth. And I, so I only take the bare essentials that I put in my body. I just don't want to put stuff in my body. But to keep married to him, I needed to get those hormones taken care of because and, and I was not balance, me. And her yeah. emotional balance. Yeah. Uh, so it was a discovery because we've also discovered in counseling that there are certain women with tremendous depression mm -hmm. and they get their hormones checked and they're in the situation she was in mm -hmm. and they start the, the treatment, natural hormones, and, uh, and all of a sudden they snap right out of it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I just feel like God says, have dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're made of the earth as part of our dominion. We discover the problems, the issues are going on inside. Let's do our best to fi fix it in the, the, with the natural things that we can use. Or there's going to be things that are also natural hormones that we can use mm -hmm. to help fix the issues of, of our bodies and so forth and our mental state. And the state. one thing that I learned too is I did my research before I ever did anything. Um, I suffered from migraines since I was young, since I was a little girl. And I also suffer from fibromyalgia, which I still have, but a, a lighter, a slighter case. And the problem with fibromyalgia and migraines is it debilitates you at times. Um, but because my levels of my progesterones are normal, now, I don't have migraines anymore. Took it all away. I am still sensitive to colognes and perfumes and stuff, and I can get a sick headache from that, but nothing like I used to suffer from as a child all the way to now. So I know you have to get to the root level. Um, a lot of people are treating only symptoms. They're not getting to the root, and I'm a firm believer of doing that. And so I'm just trying to get the word out there because I actually had people who shared it with me and I went to a doctor to help me and it worked. So it worked for me and I just want the girls to know if, they're, if you're not getting educated on it, it does increase your sex life too. You get you back into the swing of things. You, you're a lot more sensitive, much more... Um, ready to go, I'm, I'm No, so and it changed just, her whole attitude throughout the day. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it, would, it took a little while to, you know, take charge, but uh, all of a sudden I, I said to myself, I got my old wife back, you know, mm. not that she's old, but, you know. I am when old. She was I'm happy, old. When she was happy and had energy and so forth, mm -hmm. it, it radically changed her. So this is the process of getting older from your 20s to your 30s to your 40s mm -hmm. to your 50s. Um, I don't know what 60s are like. Yes, I do. Anyway, uh, but it is the process of getting older. And, you know, it's, it's important that we exercise. We take care of our health uh, to the best of our ability. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, I figure this way, you know, take care of the temple. The mm -hmm. temple is, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Take care of your temple to the best of your ability. I made a commitment to my life years and years ago as a young man that I'm all, always keep exercising, always keep going to the gym. I'm going to do that. So I try to go to the gym about twice a week. If it's a good week, I might get in three times, but it's generally twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's good about it. She's, yeah, you go, you're, you feel better. It mm -hmm. clears my head. Um, and I just work out. You get the endorphins moving. It's kind it, of your nothing box. Experience. It, is, it is a nothing <laughs> box experience, you know, and, and and, and there's times I just, you know, I'll be working out thinking of my messages. It's kind of, why do you push these dumb weights around? It's just, you feel better afterwards. I don't know. You get on the ellipser, you run the treadmill, all these different things. Some people like to be outside exercising. That's great. Uh, but that's just something I've decided to do from when I was young all the way through my life. And so I try to always take care of that. And uh, uh, if I could improve my golf game, I would. I just can't do it. But anyway... It's, uh, it's, 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 you know, we enjoy life. We enjoy each other. We find out what makes us happy and, and what makes us sad, right? Mm -hmm. What makes us unhappy. And we work at that, you know. To, and you got to ask these questions, guys. Mm -hmm. Ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Don't just assume. Now, there's times when I ask her, she says, no, you haven't done anything. Everything's fine. So I don't need to worry about it. No, you're fine. I'm just, it's one of those things going on right now with me. Okay, good. Let us know, ladies. Let us know. Uh, that it is just something you're going through, and 
I'm not going to be a fixer of it and just enjoy life, okay? Um, and the other thing it's for us guys is be, be complimentary. Be encouraging uh, with your wife, okay? And, and just bless the socks off her, amen? She has no socks tonight because I've been doing my it's job. It's too hot in no. Hawaii to wear socks. <laughs> but we just have to do these things and, and find out what really makes her excited about every aspect of our lives, whether it be in raising the kids or being uh, just uh, what you do for her in the evening and so forth, in the morning, and find out. And then do it. And you know what? You're going to have a much better life. You're going to have a fun life. You're going to have a great life as you guys all work together in, in everything of life. Um, I love what Solomon writes in Solomon, Song of Solomon. He says, how beautiful are your feet and sandals. You heard of some of this on Gunger. O prince's daughter, the curves of your thighs are like jewels. The work of your hands, the work of, work of the hands of a skillful workman. Your navel is a rounded goblet. Now, I know he said that's an Audi belly button. That was wrong. I have to correct false doctrine. <laughs> a goblet goes, it's, you know, it's rounded at the top and it goes in like this. She had a nice goblet-sized belly button, I guess, you know, uh, probably, you know, whatever. But you could pour things in it. It wasn't an Audi, okay? It wasn't the goblet going backwards. So, <laughs> um, uh, but he was having fun. I get it. Uh, it lacks no blended beverage. Your waist is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Uh, I know he said she had a heap of wheat of a, of a waist that she was, you know, if you look at a, one farm, you can see a mound of wheat, right? Well, in those days, they were more like wheat was tied together and so forth. It was smaller and so forth. And so I, I think we're talking about a shapely body. Uh, we're not talking about a skinny model, but a shapely body, but not uh, over overdone. Your waist is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Uh, is, it, are they, are, is she perfumed? I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, your two breasts are like two fawns, twins, of a gazelle. And what is this guy doing? He says, I'm excited about you mm -hmm. as my wife. You're beautiful to me. You're marvelous. No matter, you know, what aspect of life we're going through, you know. And then uh, your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes like pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabim. Your nose is like a tower of Lebanon. He talked about that. But that Im implication is, is speaking of being courageous you have a courageous countenance it wasn't something like you got this honker of a nose out here right uh, uh, and, but he says you're, you have a courageous countenance your, your nose is like the tower of Lebanon man you're ready to go you just love life amen not, not a fight so uh, your, your, head, your, your head crowns you like, uh, like Mount Carmel you could use Mauna Kea. I don't know if you want to use Kilauea. Your, your, your head is like a volcano, ready to explode. All, no, don't go there. Uh, maybe diamond head might be better, right? Uh, <laughs> and and your, head, your hair is, is, and the hair of your head is like purple. In other words, purple is always a majestic color. Uh, your right. majestic hair. Uh, a, king, a king is held captive by your tresses. How fair and how pleasant you are, O oh love, with your delights. The stature of yours is like a palm tree, and your breast like its clusters. I said, I will go up to the palm tree, and I will take hold of its branches. Let now your breast be like clusters of the vine, the fragrance of your breath like apples, and the roof of your mouth like the best wine." The bride, interrupts, uh, the bride interrupts and tells her beloved, that's the bridegroom talking to her, and he, he says, the wine goes down smoothly for my beloved, moving gently the lips of sleepers. Now you go, the lips of sleepers, what is that? Does she fall asleep? She got a sleeping disease or what? Uh, the word sleepers translated is speaking of the teeth. So it's the lips and the teeth, everything together, how wonderful everything is. I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. And I think that's so vitally important right there. Mm -hmm. His desire is toward me. A woman is secure in knowing that your desire is for her and her only. 
You don't make comparisons to other women. You don't make comparisons to women of the past. There is no comparison to the one that now you are married to, mm -hmm. and vice versa for that matter. So it's important that we have each other secure in that love relationship as well as in love making, that all is marvelous and good. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do as, as a married couple. And um, it's, it's, it's just vitally important. What do you want to add? Um, I just think that in Song of Solomon, like I'm asking you all to read it tonight or this week, is the first two chapters is all complementary to one another. They go back and forth complimenting to one another. And I would put out there, like, when's the last time that you complimented your spouse, you know, or um, vice versa. And to really put that out there and compliment authentically. Don't just do it because I'm asking you to or because people tell us to do it. Like, compliment with an authentic heart behind it. Um, I, I, I love the Song of Solomon because there's a lot in there where they actually, they have their ups and downs, and we'll probably talk about that a little bit next week, but also how they get away to refresh their love. So they do have the everyday tolls of life that they go through, and then Solomon comes back and affirms his love, as Daryl just read. I love the part in, the, in Song of Solomon where it says that his banner over me is love. And as we know in, in Israel's armies, when they went out to war, after they would go and take their flag and and put a pull, a, a banner up saying that this land is our, is our victory, you know? And, and it's like when, we, when our spouses say, you're mine, you're mine, you're my man, you're my woman. And it's like his banner over me is like, it's telling the whole world, I'm taken, this is, this is my woman, this is my marriage, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make it victorious. I'm gonna protect it, I'm gonna provide for it, and I'm going to honor it. And um, I love how she, she talks to, to um, Solomon here and how he comes back and he um, has beautiful words to talk about her. He's very des descriptive. And I learn by objects and I'm more visual and hands-on. So when I read Song Solomon, I can see such a beautiful love story of a... Uh, um, of a communication. There's communication. He comes to her, to her bedchamber, and she doesn't get out of bed, and she hears him, and she says, ah, I don't want to do this, and I'm just giving you a paraphrase. And then he walks away, and then she goes, oh, I better get out of bed. And then he's gone, and she missed the opportunity. And that's so convicting, because so many times we miss opportunities to show our spouses how much we need to bless them, to honor them, to consider them, to encourage them, to build them up, to, to minister to them where only we can do that. And we miss the opportunity of that word of encouragement or that act of love. And, um, and here she, she's feeling like, oh, I blew it. And you know, but then they come back and they reaffirm, they rebuild, they refresh their relationship. And so it's wonderful picture of how, you know, we're going to have those droll days as a family and as a married couple and in relationships, but to really work at it, to really realize what, what God has given us. Like, we're a blessing to each other. We're a gift from God from each other. And God can reunite and ignite our marriage love for one another in all aspects. Are we, how are we doing in our spiritual life together as a couple? How are we doing in our physical life? Do, do we care for ourselves? Do we shower? You know, like for us, I'm a clean freak, so, and Daryl's kind of a clean freak too. Um, so, you know, we prepare for our lovemaking. We don't come off the streets and be yucky. Like, I prepare myself. He prepares himself. We prepare the scene. We prepare the evening. We do it all, like, because we can. Okay, we can at this empty nesting stage is awesome. This is like the, the cream of the crop part of the marriage. You know, we earned it from the 20s of crazy kids and crazy schedules and having to maneuver all that in the 30s and the 40s, then going through menopause was not fun. And then coming out of that alive has been, you know, our reward, you know. And so um, just to say that it, it's so important, like when she talked about, like we've got to take care of the little foxes and foxes are little scoundrels and they're destructive and, and you know, bitternesses and un, unmet needs and unresolved issues can 
to, can put a damper on that intimacy of friendship and companionship and lovemaking and doing life together. And, um, and finances could be one of those things too. So we, we have to guard, we have to take care of those things and, and be a couple that deals with life as it comes. Some of you have blended families like I've had. You know, those foxes are our blended family. It's those situations that is our normal family blended, where some of you have gotten married later in life, some of you are getting married for the second or third time. Um, so those kind of things where, where we have to navigate life and do that together, and that really comes with the grace and the Holy Spirit um, guiding you and teaching you with the biblical concepts and not what the world is telling you that, oh, you don't have to deal with that. No, we do have to deal with that. Those of you who are single moms too, those kind of things. Like It's a different dynamic when you're under the Lordship of Christ, isn't it? And we, we have to maneuver that. And so... Um, it's not always going to be easy. It's, you know, you're going to feel lonely sometimes in your relationships, you know, but that's okay because they were never meant to meet that need. God is. He's the one that provides ev all my supply, you know, and to be, to make sure that I keep that always in focus. It's, um, you know, some of our spouses go wayward at times, but we stay the course so that we honor our commitment so that it'll be contagious that they will come back, you know? And, and sometimes we have difficult situations where we have outside um, relationships that are dealing with our blended family. That too solidifies us to help learn how are we gonna navigate with these negative things that over here where it doesn't meet our criteria. Those are the things that's always good to get extra help on, people who have gone through that. I did that because we've had a blended family. We've had a lot of crazy stuff over the 42 years I've been married to him. And some things I needed someone else. How'd you handle that? Can you give me some insight? There's nothing wrong with asking for help, you know? And so I think that comes with that too. Illnesses, he's had a ton of illnesses over the years. And I don't mean it to be mean, Daryl, no, I'm just it's, saying. It's, so, you know, we've had to navigate through insecurities with that. Um, uh, you know, that, that can hurt um, your relationship too because you get frustrated as a caregiver. You, can, you only have so much patience, you know, and then it's like, God, give me more patience, you know, and to deal with all that comes with that. So um, uh, I'm, now I'm going to ramble. For better, so for worse. It is for better, for worse. But, you know, the beautiful thing that she's... For richer, for poor. That... Uh, I've told her many wait. times, and Enough. let me just speak for a moment. Okay. Uh, many times in our younger years, you know, where you don't have the finances, right? Mm. We're living on love. That's as simple as it is. And no matter what, it's been an expression we've carried with us throughout our whole mm -hmm. married life. And it is always important that love never fails. That's what the Bible declares. And you got to keep loving each other, yes, in spite of each other at times. Uh, she can be very difficult. I can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to break our bond of love. It's just a passing time. We've got to work our way through this. What's going on? Go through the process of discovery. Then recognize it. And if I need to repent, I'll repent. If she needs to repent, she'll repent. We maintain uh, that humility of what Christ has taught us to maintain. To, to love each other at all costs. Because Satan wants to destroy our marriage. Mm -hmm. And we will not give him that satisfaction ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at the culture today, the culture is trying to make women into men mm -hmm. and men into women. And this has been going on for at least from the 80s on through. We had the sexual revolution in the 60s and 70s. Then we had the homosexual revolution throughout the 80s and 90s into the 2000s. And now we've reached a point where they've been feminizing men for years, right? Mm -hmm. Making us feminine, not to be manly. And they've been mas uh, making women masculine uh, throughout the same period, not to be a young lady, beautiful woman, but instead act like a man. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we've reached the, the, the nth degree of, uh, you're growing up right now, well, you may be a woman even though you're born a man. So you, now you need to wear women's clothes and put on women's makeup. In fact, you need to go through a hormone change completely, right? Uh, with all the blockers and so forth. And the same thing with, with the young girls. Mm -hmm. This is Satan's strategy to destroy us as 
legitimate, legitimate, real men and real women and to feminize and then to confuse the genders. Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for quite some time and we will not fall for it. So I want to encourage you, men be men, women be ladies, or how's yeah. this? Men be gentlemen mm -hmm. and women be ladies, amen? Mm -hmm. And let's not, let's not allow Satan to change that. It's very important that we keep that marriage relationship that way. I don't want to be married to a masculine woman, you know? Uh, I want to be married to a woman. And I want to be married to a, man, a manly man. Stop it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. You can add on. Well, uh, you, you broke my, my that, concentration. That, that, that put us under, right? Yeah. Over the top? So in chapter 3 of Song of Solomon, it says it four times. She says, whom my soul loves. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, we need to realize our spouse is who we love because Jesus has given us that his love for one another. We have the opportunity to love as close as we can to Christ when we love our spouse and when we're loved by them. And um, the more we say it, the more we actually act on it too. There was a point in time in our first five years uh, I really fell out of love from Daryl. Like, I was mad at him because he was never around. And I told him, I go, I don't really love you. And, and the reason why, because he wasn't around. So time is my love language. So if I'm not feeling loved, I'm not giving love because that was just me at a young age. I mean, I remember it was like 25 when and that happened. I wasn't around because I was trying to save the world. Yeah. With Pastor Raul Reese Which and, told him. and the ministry. So that was yeah. the, the whole thing of trying to balance out the ministry and marriage and what was happening, I had the ministry first, the marriage was second. That mm -hmm. created the problems. But for me, I'm saying, I'm just doing a work for the Lord. You know, a young guy, just zealous. And, and yet all of a sudden I had to switch and realize, no, she's my number one priority. And uh, I, I, I didn't think I was leaving her behind, but I was. I was leaving her behind, leaving my son behind. And I had to repent and make that adjustment. I wish I could right remember way. the book that I read while he was gone on a trip. Because I felt like, oh, we're going to lose it. We're not, I, I'm thinking, I'm going to ruin our testimony. And um, I, I just can't even remember that book. But that book talked about um, that God had given me a husband and that he had, that, and he had given him a wife. And that, like, to do, to, to say you love him. Like, because you married him, because you know you did. And love is, is a feeling. It's so, it, but it's not a commit. True love is a commitment. It doesn't, it's not based on a feeling. And so when you're young in your 20s, you're very feeling oriented, very relational, you know. And so guys are more, you know, aggressive and just, you know, guys. Girls are more relationships. So when the relationship was not flourishing, I just, it's like, it was not, it was just like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I was really done because I felt no, nothing, felt unfulfilled. But this book talked to me about realizing why did you marry him? And the very thing I married him for was his zeal for God and it was the thing I was mad at, you know? And so I had to like get to the heart of, okay, I knew this guy was, he had a work ethic, comes from a home that's amazingly worker bees and strong personality knows what he wants is a can-do guy will do it till the nth degree um and then I, you know and he loved god and he loved the kingdom of god and but he forgot me and josh and that was the problem and we just you know it's okay because we had to learn the hard way and with that hard learning we've been more sensitive to our staff when we became a pastor and a pastor's wife is that we weren't going to let our staff families feel the way we felt. And, um, because we love our staff, we love their kids. And, um, I had to learn to love my husband, to ask God to give me a love for him and to refresh my love. So there was a point in my marriage, seriously, that I did not love him and God gave me that love. So if you're there, you and the internet, or anybody hearing this um, on the radio down the road, if you don't 
feel like you love your husband. I understand, but I know God can replenish that love if you ask him, because that would honor God and would honor him in your marriage. And so God is the God of love who actually breathes love into our hearts. And so I just want to encourage you with that, because I know we're talking a lot about, you know, you know, wonderful things, but not everybody has a wonderful marriage, but you have to work at it. Don't lose hope. Ours hasn't always been wonderful. It's been challenging, but it's rewarding. And, and, you know, my whole thing is our marriage, just so you know, is always a testimony of Christ in the church. And so I always keep that in view um, when I'm making decisions, when it's dealing with our, our relationship and our family, is I don't want to ruin the testimony of Christ in us, you know, in our family and in our ministry. And so... Um, and, and the other thing is I had to listen to what she was saying. Instead of putting up a defense that says, you don't get it. I'm serving God. That's all there is to it. Uh, and I had to stop the world, if you will, the, the work, and listen to what she was trying to tell me mm-hmm. and, and find out where am, I, where am I wrong. If I'm wrong and you're unhappy, then I'm not doing the right things in the Lord uh, for you as my wife and the love of my life, and I, I, I want to fix it. And so that's, that's important. And she had to sit down and explain it to me. I, I think we have to be careful that we don't mirror our parents, that we mirror our Heavenly Father. And he was mirroring your dad, your father, mm-hmm. earthly yeah. father. Yeah, and so he when knew. he switched it and realized he had to mirror his Heavenly Father and love his family as Christ loved the church, it changed everything. Everything was changed when... He, he did that, and it even changed me because it made me want also to go the higher standard of loving one another and loving God's people the way Christ loved. I mean, because it snaps you out of it. So just to, to encourage you, like, don't mirror your, your, your parents. Mirror what God's word says. Um, I mean, unless your parents were godly, that's different. I mean, I'm just saying in our case, that wasn't the case. So I think you've got to be wrapping it up. Yes. That's but like still, still have the higher standard. God's the standard. The word of God is the standard and for the marriage. So our encouragement is <clears throat> for married couples is don't lose the fire of love in your relationship. Keep it fresh. Keep it exciting. Keep dating. Mm-hmm. Enjoy one another. Uh, if you plan a weekend away together, if you get someone to take care of the kids, whatever, someone you can absolutely trust, uh, and or, or go, make sure you go on dates together as oh, best yes. you can. Date, 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 date. Um, and and keep life fun. You know, when you're young, you got kids everywhere. It's it's hard to do all the romantic things at home. Uh, that's why if you go away for a weekend, you know, maybe just get a hotel at Waikiki, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be for a night, but have do fun things, enjoy each other. And, and keep loving the Lord and keep loving each other and enjoy life. That's the real key. Don't let the world, the pressures of the world, the stresses of the world drag down your marriage relationship. They're going to be there. You pray, you deal with it, but always make sure that for guys, your beautiful bride is special. Enjoy that relationship. For ladies, enjoy that relationship with your fantastic husband. <clears throat> No, I'm just kidding. And and enjoy it. Enjoy it together. But have a good time. Have a good time. Um, It's important. Anything else? I just want to be that couple that's that little, little old couple that holds hands and they're just cute. And they're just loving each other all the way to eternity. I'm just hoping we can do that. We will. Okay. Let's work on it. We will. Keep working on it. Will you? Yeah. Say amen. Amen. Very good. There you go. Okay. (laughs) Let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you for this time of just sharing about being fruitful and multiplying, sharing about the Song of Solomon, sharing about 1 Corinthians 7, and, and many other things about how you have designed us and made us, and uh, you provide for us and bless us. And Lord, we want to do the same for one another. Uh, what brings happiness and joy is a married couple just enjoying one another. Mm-hmm. and having fun at life and every aspect of life that you have given us and raising kids and blessing our children and 
showing them your ways to do a great mighty work in your kingdom. Lord God, for the single people here, that they will just uh, be patient as they've come to learn and to grow and to mature in the area of their faith uh, when it comes to relationships. May they be prepared and ready to go as you bring that special someone into their life. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a beautiful week in the Lord. If you want to spend the night, go ahead. You look awfully relaxed out there. (laughs) (laughs) Enjoy. God bless you guys.